This is Pasties Herb. We are a team on an assignment to build the fate of men and set their hearts on fire through the media system. With hundreds of insightful videos here on our channel, we hope to bless and bond with you. Don't forget to click the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe. We love and celebrate you. Whoever you want. If you to want to be famous, lift, if God wants to Lord, lift you, you can and lift announce you through to the world me. from Nigeria, your feet Where must touch Lagos. There are two cities your feet must touch, Abelkuta and Lagos. If your feet does not touch it prophetically, your voice will not be heard from this nation because there is a covenant. In the realm of the spirit, Abelkuta gave birth to Lagos. Let me give you two reasons very quickly. Why is power necessary? Empowerment. Why does the believer need to be empowered? Number one, I wrote here and I want you to please listen and write. To fulfill our God-given assignments and advance the kingdom, we will need more than skill and human abilities. To fulfill our assignments, and advance the kingdom we will need more than skill and human abilities as wonderful as it is to be skillful as wonderful as it is to have your abilities developed and deployed the business of kingdom advancement will require more than skill it will require more than human abilities you cannot birth the purposes of god in the strength of the flesh it will take divine empowerment. Are we together? Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. Angel Gabriel comes to this young virgin who is espoused to marry Joseph and brings her a very interesting salutation and tells her that she's going to be with child but without the active participation of a man. And so Mary marveled and said, how shall these things be? seeing that i know not a man i spoke a bit about it in the morning how shall this business be seeing that i do not have any human connection how shall these souls my family members be warned seeing that all of them have rebelled against god the answer is in verse 35 never forget this for the rest of your life and the angel answered and said the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. May that be someone's testimony tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. It says the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Why do we need spiritual empowerment? Because it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness that are determined to destroy the purposes of God in your life and my life. It takes power, not negotiations, not discussions. The only language that the realm of the spirit understands is power. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Let me quote for the sake of time. It says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves through the greatness of thy power that all the patterns and the yokes of darkness that have kept people bound in your life and your family when you are empowered by the spirit of the living God you can lose those chains like Samson and begin to make constructive destiny progress it takes empowerment Satan is a stubborn spirit the arsenals of darkness the gates of hell that Jesus himself said will attempt to prevail against the church it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness until your destiny emerges hallelujah it takes power to make the helper of your destiny remember you one man's forgetfulness 
added two years to Joseph in the prison. Joseph pleaded with him and said, I am innocent. Now that you'll be reinstated, please, when you go to Pharaoh, advocate my innocence and the man forgot. But after two years, the Bible says Pharaoh had a dream and no man could interpret the dream in the palace. And the wine presser said, ah, I remember my wrong. I forgot and I delayed a man. In the name of Jesus, the power that makes the helper of your destiny remember you. May you find that dimension of power tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you receive power? There are two biblical channels for receiving the anointing or receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm saying this as a John the Baptist so that when our Father in the Lord comes, your heart is prepared to receive. Tonight is not the night to waste. You must open your heart and to be intentional. Do not just be a spectator and say, wow, I attended the 26th convention. No. Your heart must be determined to receive. Let me show you very quickly and then we'll pray. There are two biblical channels for receiving the power of God, for receiving the anointing. First and foremost, you must understand that the power of God is received. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive. That means you can reject it. But as many as received him, it says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. You shall receive power. Genuine power is received, number one, directly from God through an encounter please write this is the first biblical channel for receiving genuine authentic spiritual power directly from God through an encounter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 the first five words how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth first four words how God anointed Jesus who anointed Jesus you can receive that impartation directly from God that experience happened to a man in the Bible called Solomon where God appeared to him in a dream and said Solomon what would you have me do for you and Solomon asked for a wise and an understanding heart and the Bible says God granted him such as no man within his time had that level of wisdom and understanding through encounter a man can receive directly from God number two the more common channel we see according to scripture for receiving the power of God is through a mystery that we call impartation. Please write it down. This is the second biblical channel for receiving the power of God. Impartation. Impartation from the careers of the anointing. The second way that we are empowered in this kingdom is by receiving impartation from the careers of the anointing when you study the parables of the ten virgins remember that story the ten virgins the bible says for the five that had their oil finished they were given an instruction it said go to them that sell and buy so there are them that sell there are custodians of the anointing. Go to them that sell and buy. You buy with the currency of hunger. You buy with the currency of humility. You buy with the currency of followership. You buy with the currency of honor. You buy with the currency of service. Go to them that sell and buy. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. 
Paul was speaking over the church in Philippi, Philippians 1 and verse 7. He says, but ye all are partakers of my grace. Ye all. That means an entire congregation can partake of the grace that he has put upon a man. Did the spirit that was on Moses not fall on 70 elders? And every one of them received a part of it. They prophesied from morning even until night. When God sends a word to Jacob, he intends for that word to lighten upon the entire Israel. Romans 1 and verse 11. Paul said, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Your establishment is not in view without empowerment. Let's look for very quickly at just one example of this impartation between Moses and Joshua. In Numbers chapter 27, please write quickly as I prepare to round up. Numbers 27 from verse 18 to 20. Numbers 27, I would like to read this one. Numbers 27, the Bible says, And the Lord said to Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom already is the Spirit, and lay your hands upon him. Verse 19, and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight. The last verse, it says, and thou shalt take some of thine honor. You will put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Let's see what came upon Joshua as a result of this impartation. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. 3, 4 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, every dimension you have seen at work in the RCCG, Every dimension of grace you have seen at work in the life of our father and our mother is yours for the taking if you know how to receive. There is a protocol to receive it. Desire is only one. Having a desire to receive does not bring the anointing to you. There are two biblical principles as far as receiving impartation is concerned. Number one, honor please write it down honor you will never receive an anointing from a vessel that you dishonor he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and let me by this charge admonish especially my generation of people Beware, lest you, we become a, a disempowered generation because of dishonor. We live in a world today where dishonor is fashionable. Anybody can talk about any father of faith and just believe that I'm speaking my mind. Can I tell you, when you fight your honor, your father, you lose your life. When a father fights his son, he loses his honor. There are protocols. Are we together? Yes. Tonight you must believe that our Father in the Lord is beyond just a general overseer of a ministry. Respectfully speaking, if that is all you see about him, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but you may not receive anything tonight. Because it takes more than being a general overseer to impart. Elijah said, if you can see me, you have to look beyond me being a prophet. He said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. There are many of us, respectfully speaking, 
who have access to the anointed but never receive because of over familiarity that has graduated to dishonor you need to repent genuinely and say father grant me the grace to receive honor the first key to receiving from a vessel who is truly anointed number two service service rushing because of time the bible called elisha i hope you know that the next prophet was never supposed to be elisha the next prophet should come from among the school of prophets it was customary for prophets to raise other prophets elisha was a, a farmer but he was a farmer who honored elijah and the bible says he poured water and when it was time for the mantle to fall, it did not go to any one of those prophets. Gehazi would probably have been one of the most anointed prophets in the Bible. Imagine if Gehazi had received a double portion of the anointing upon Elisha. That would be a fourfold anointing that Elijah carried. But dishonor and familiarity made him to die a cheap death even with leprosy, honor and service. I want to take the last two or three minutes that I have to stand upon the grace of our Father and make a few declarations over someone's life and that if your heart is open to receive, that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, you will marvel and wonder at the things that begin to happen. I decree and declare over your life, every door that has closed over you, I come in the name of the Lord God of heaven and I speak over that door. Ephata, be opened. Be opened. Career doors be opened. Financial doors be opened. Family doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. I want to declare over someone the Bible says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel some of you your life has been so slow you don't have all the time to move that slow the unit of destiny is time whatever eats up your time has taken part of your life can I declare speed over your life in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare may 10 years be put in one year for you may 10 years be put in one year for you